Geographic Features of Nebraska Nebraska is known as a dry, flat prairie with no hills or mountains. It's not a fair way to be thought of. Even though the word flat is often a good description of Nebraska, the whole state is, in a broad sense, part of the Great Plains, the state is far from featureless. Nebraska has a lot to see and learn about, from the rich Missouri River Valley on the state's eastern border to the rough buttes and mesas in the west. The Grasslands and Prairies Even though Nebraska is often thought of as a whole part of the Great Plains, true prairies and grasslands are actually quite rare and getting even rarer. Once, there were 170 million acres of tall grass prairies across North America. Now, there are only a few small patches left. Homestead National Monument in southeastern Nebraska protects about 100 acres of restored tall grass prairie. This restored prairie is important for many birds and other animals because it is their home. It is also a great place to hike and watch birds. The Lincoln Creek Prairie and Trail is about an hour and a half away in Aurora. It is a much smaller piece of prairie. The Prairie Plains Resource Institute, which runs prairie preserves all over the state, has its headquarters on this 16-acre piece of land. The Valley of the Missouri River Nebraska's lowest point is on the Missouri River, which is the second longest river in the United States and the waterway that separates Nebraska from South Dakota, Iowa, and Kansas. In the valley around the Missouri River, there are many forests, prairies, and wetland areas. This makes for a rich and diverse ecosystem. There are also a lot of ways to enjoy the outdoors in the Missouri River Valley. As the Missouri National Recreational River, the National Park Service takes care of two sections along the South Dakota state line that add up to about 100 miles and have many places to fish, picnic, camp, launch boats, and go hiking. The National Park Service is where you can get maps. Nebraska Sandhills the Nebraska Sandhills are a huge area that covers about 19,300 square miles and is dominated by grass-covered sand dunes that can be up to 400 feet high and 20 miles long. It is the most impressive sand dune formation in the Western Hemisphere because of how big it is. From Grand Island to Alliance, Nebraska Highway 2 goes through the heart of the Sandhills for more than 250 miles. Along the way, there are a lot of great views and places to visit. The Stir Museum of the Prairie Pioneer in Grand Island, the Nebraska National Forest near Halsey, and Dobby's Frontier Town in Alliance, which is a recreated Wild West frontier town, are some of the best things to see. A lot of the sandhills in Nebraska are used to graze cattle, and there are also a lot of ranches here. Some, like the Double R Ranch near Mullen and the Verd Valley Guest Ranch near Hyannis, let guests stay there and learn about real ranching. Buttes, Bluffs and Mesas in the western part of Nebraska, which is often called the Panhandle, the landscape gets a lot stranger and rougher. Dry prairies give way to craggy bluffs, table-like mesas, rocky pillars, and stark buttes that tower over the landscape. Scott's Bluff National Monument, which is on 3,000 acres and has many miles of hiking trails that go through all kinds of terrain, is one of the best places to see these geological formations. Scott's Bluff, which gives the monument its name, stands 800 feet above the North Platte River. The Dome Rock Butte and the Spire-like Chimney Rock are also great places to see. The Highest Point in Nebraska From the Missouri River, which is the lowest point in Nebraska at 840 feet, the land gradually rises to 5,424 feet in the far west of the state. The most surprising thing about this rise is that it happens so slowly that it's almost impossible to notice. Still, the highest point in Nebraska is in Kimball County. It is called Panorama Point, which is a good name for it. Don't look for a peak. Panorama Point is more of a gentle rise surrounded by an endless, but slightly lower, flat expanse. This makes for a really amazing view that goes on for miles. The spot, which is just outside of Bushnell and marked by a stone, is on private property. There is a small fee to get in. Tri-State Corner, where Nebraska, Colorado and Wyoming all meet, is only a few minutes away by car. Like and subscribe.